welcome to Connect and Conversations, a special program to commemorate the International Women's Day 2020, brought to you by the Transformative Leadership and Sustainable Development Initiative in partnership with the Above Whispers Media Group. This year's International Women's Day celebration, Each for Equal, marks the 25th year anniversary of the Beijing Declaration. The 1995 Beijing Platform for Action flagged 12 key areas where urgent action was needed to ensure greater equality and opportunities for women and men, girls and boys. It also laid out concrete ways for countries to bring about this change, highlighting areas such as women and poverty, education and training of women, women and health, violence against women, women and the economy, women in power and decision making, women in media, human rights of women, institutional mechanisms, the girl child amongst others. Uh, today we have a panel of amazing women and a man looking into the Nigerian uh, economy and then the Nigerian space as well and how well we have fared. Our first panelist is Dr. Josephine Efa Chukuma. She is a leading activist on gender-based violence and women's rights, women's human rights in Nigeria, and the executive director of Project Alert, a non-profit organization she founded 20 years ago, working on violence against women in Nigeria. Also on the panel, we have Ibijoke Faborode. Until recently, she was the head agri-tech and healthcare at the United Kingdom Department for International Trade. She is the founder of the Social Chain Network Africa. We also have Chingwe Egwim. She's an economist with specialization in macroeconomics as well as fixed income analysis. She is currently working at FBN Quest Merchant Bank. Finally, the only man with us today is Opeyemi Orinowo. He is a development practitioner and analyst working on poverty and inequality in Nigeria. So yes, so let's get straight to this. Thank you so much for joining Thank me, you. everyone. Thank and you. happy International Women's Day. Thank you. All right. Uh, so let's start with you, uh, Dr. Josephine. Interestingly, <laughs> you were at the uh, Beijing conference 25 yeah. years ago. 1995. Long time from Long now. Long time. <laughs> Seems like forever. Yes. All right. So from then till now, in yeah. terms of milestone policy yeah. frameworks, what yeah. would you say has changed? Quite a lot of things have changed. Definitely we are not where we were before, and yes, we aren't, we, we aren't where we want to be, but we've actually made quite some progress. Um, like you said in the opening statement, um, in 1995, at that conference, 12 critical areas of concern were identified. Yes. And um, cutting across as they affect women and girls especially. And for a lot of us in the civil society space and also in government, it was an opportunity for people to just pick one thing and run with it, mm -hmm. you know, professionalism. So cutting across women in business, economy and women, violence against women, human rights, education, um, politics and all of that, we, there's been some progress. There are policies in place now. There are laws in place now. Before this, before 1995, for instance, we didn't have specific laws on violence against women. We didn't really have the gender policy. Policies as it relates to women, the whole issue of 35% affirmative action, it's a policy. Now we're trying yes. to talk about it being moved into law because the policy... Moving from policy to, to law, law is very important. To make it, you know, to really get it to bite, for people to deliberately and consciously and intentionally ensure that this is done across board, be it state and federal level mm -hmm. you know so we've actually made some progress you know but like i said we are not there yet but definitely we are not where we were mm. so have you seen a lot of this transition into the um, representation of women that you see across board it has we've we've suffered some rollback i must say i mean in the last few years mm -hmm. you know um in 1999 just after the military left and we transited into, I mean, to civil rule. We actually were almost, we actually at that 35%, 30, 35%. But like I said, in the last few years, we've actually suffered some rollback, you know, in terms of um, women actively participating mm -hmm. in um, politics, in, in, in governance and all that. In some states, it's better. For example, in Lagos State, if you go to the judiciary, it's like, in fact, it's almost 60, 40 with women mm -hmm. being in the lead. 
and some other sectors, the same thing, or is it women in business? But in some other states, basically it's They're like- They're still lagging behind, lagging behind. Uh, Was it, is it Quara or Kogi state that actually is, did very well recently with appointment? Quara? Quara, yeah. Uh, I mean, appointment of women and all of that. So we have made giant strides, mm -hmm. but we've also suffered some setbacks. setbacks well. But we shouldn't be deterred. We shouldn't stop. This is this International Women's Day gives us actually the time to take stock, to celebrate ourselves. Like I said, sometimes sometimes women we are so hard on ourselves <laughs> in terms of you know. I agree with you. you know, let's just give ourselves a pat on the back, mm -hmm. you know, and then continue we just we can't afford to stop you know sitting here i mean i'm the oldest i met people but we have a <laughs> representation of you know this is, this is this is intergenerational mm -hmm. and talking about inter mm -hmm. sex too absolutely you know <laughs> we have this young man here with us you know so we can do it we just just have to keep mm. going all right, I think it's also time to bring Ibijoke into this uh, conversation. In terms of uh, the national agenda policy, where we are expected to have at least 35% women representatives in terms of governance, uh, what level of progress have you seen in this regard? Um, I think I, I mean, I couldn't agree more with Dr. Josephine. Certainly. Um, we're not doing so well right now. I mean, we're about 4.1% mm. in terms of um, representation across yeah. parliament, and that's the worst in Africa. Yeah. Yeah. And you have about 11 female Lhasa representative members out of 360, yeah. 360, right? And about eight, eight female senators out of 109. That's no good. Yeah. And for me, I think it's, it's quite thought provoking in the sense that Nigeria's population, you've got half of the pop more than half of the population are women. But then when it comes to governance and politics, we don't see a lot we of don't that see it. Yeah. So the national agenda policy is great, but it needs to move from policy to law. And it needs to be affected across board. So it's yeah. not just at the national level, yeah. it's also at the local level, at the party level. But it needs to be passed into law. Yeah. Um, and for me, I think it's very fundamental. Any nation that prioritizes the social economic development would actually pass that into law. It's quite sad that it's still a policy on paper. Mm. We should have mm. moved, for, yeah. moved way beyond that. Mm. It's very important. If, if you want to preserve the economy, if you want to pave the way for, for future, future generations to come, you have to get more women into elective office because it changes the outcomes for everyone. It's not just for women. And I tell people it's not about women's right. It's yeah. everyone's right. Yeah. The fight for, for gender equity, the fight for women's, you know, women's rights and advancing the rights, it's not just about women, it's Humanity. about children, it's about each and every one of us. Mm. Nigeria is, is experiencing a population bloom. Mm. And I think we're going to be, I mean, I'm chewing with the economics here. As a, um, <laughs> by 2050, what's this, 400 million? <laughs> Yes, so we can imagine. Are you, sure yeah. you know? are you sure we're not 200 million? That's a projection, you know. Are you sure we're not 200 million already? And that's already? what we have on paper in terms of data. And what I tell people is this, look, mm -hmm. the, the, the last budget as well, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of prioritization of education and healthcare, where are we? Mm. These are clear indicators for socioeconomic progress in any country. Childbirth in the country but should not be a problem. Are, these are yeah. key Lean issues. Mm -hmm. But so when, see, a woman is a natural. When you get a woman into power, she would definitely prioritize this. We need to care about health care. We need to care about education. You need literate pop a literate population. We cannot be having issues such as high um, infant and, um, mortality uh, and, and maternal mortality, mm -hmm. mortality rates in Nigeria. And we expect our economy to grow. Mm. So it is very pivotal to the economy of Nigeria. It is not just, it's not just um, a feel-good-to-have policy. Mm -hmm. If we're talking about the future of Nigeria, it's not just, and, and you know, I don't agree with the fact that only women should push for the, you know, passing the, 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 bill. the bill. No. Mm -hmm. It's everyone, if we really care about our future. I mean, because that yes. that's sums us up the health of an economy at the end of the day. Absolutely. We can't say we have one of the highest population rates, mortality rate is higher, out of school children, then what exactly are we hoping for in terms of the, the future? The multiply effect so, is so dangerous. Me, being the only man on the panel, <laughs> I certainly believe that you have one or two things to say regarding this. Oh, yeah, I think I should just start with blessed is the man amongst me. <laughs> blessed is <laughs> Always, you are blessed. Yeah, I mean, it, in, interesting conversation. And I want to perhaps uh, second uh, the, the points that have been made by Dr. Josephine and Ibi Joke as well. I think that uh, Nigerian women have come a long way. I think uh, 
Uh, definitely, uh, if, if Mrs. Uh, Dr. Josephine attended Beijing conference, that's 25 years ago. Maybe my consciousness in terms ago. of mm. active participation might not start mm. at that time. But I mean, in recent past, maybe in the last 10 years or in the last 15 years, I think that Nigerian women have come a long way. And uh, Ibijo Kim made mention of uh, the gender policy. I mean, we're still talking, we're still at the stage of even domestication across the states. Mm. How many states in Nigeria have domesticated the, the gender policy? Mm -hmm. You know, so these are conversations that uh, that bring into focus the complexity of the country mm -hmm. in terms of where we are. We are all not moving at the same speed. And uh, if there's anything I also want to point out was that, you know, uh, if one looks at the uh, Beijing plan of action and uh, at the time it started 25 years ago, you know, I'm one of those people that believe and also programming has also reflected that any agenda or any advocacy that starts from the top is not always effective. Most advocacy is, bottom is, 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 I mean, bottom-up is the only approach. Mm -hmm. So it really seemed like, and this was a conversation I was also having before we came into this place, that it really seemed that the time that that uh, agreement was reached was just like a lip service, that, like, oh, let's join the bad one mm -hmm. of the country mm -hmm. and all that. But the real change that we're beginning to see now yeah. is the change that is happening from the bottom, where the people themselves are beginning to, to demand. Mm -hmm. So yes, I, I think that uh, the Nigerian women have come a long way. I celebrate every woman on the panel and Nigerian women across. across and your course. mother? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Chime, before we wrap up this first segment, would you yeah, like I to um, jump on something mm -hmm. Ibijoka said? For um, inclusiveness to occur, whether it's gender inclusiveness or financial inclusiveness, any sort of inclusiveness, you're right, fiscal injections need to be made in two specific sectors, so like um, health and education. And um, I track the budget, obviously, and um, I've seen increments in allocation mm -hmm. to these sectors. But the thing is, when you oh. compare it to every other sector, it's, way, it's still below 10%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they're making forward steps, mm -hmm. but there's still so much more that they can do. Yes. Um, can I speak on <laughs> my view on how women are doing? I think that there's been progress. A lot of progress has been made. In corporate Nigeria, you would find that um, we now have a uh, chairman in banks, and um, that's something you wouldn't have seen or heard of 20 years ago. Um, however, there's still vast room for improvement. Um, if you look at countries like Rwanda, Namibia, um, Ethiopia, you'd see that they've made good strides with regards to this. So we're making progress but we still have a lot more work to do with regards to improving representation of women across politics, corporate, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, uh, we'll just take a quick break now. It has been a very interesting conversation, but let's take uh, a quick break, we'll be back. All right, please stay with us, don't go away. Mm -hmm.